So, do you have yourself the new Osmo Action and you want to get some ND filters for it so that you've got some manual control over your imagery? Well, I'm going to show you the Bright Day 4-Pack from Freewell and that's coming right up. And as I start, I want to go ahead and give a full disclosure. Freewell did not send me these ND filters. I purchased them with my own money out of my own pocket because I wanted to get some ND filters for the Osmo Pocket and get some enhanced video. But let's talk about ND filters and their purpose. So ND, what does it stand for? That stands for neutral density. And a quick little explanation of ND filters are, the use of an ND filter allows a photographer to use a larger aperture that is at or below a diffraction limit, which varies depending on the size of the sensor medium, film or digital, in our case it's gonna be digital. In photography and optics, a neutral density filter, or ND filter, is a filter that reduces or modifies the intensity of all wavelengths or colors or light equally, giving no change in hue or color rendition. It can be a colorless, clear, or gray filter and is denoted by the Rattan number 96. The purpose of a standard photographic neutral density filter is to reduce the amount of light entering the lens. Doing so allows a photographer to select combinations of aperture, exposure time, and sensor sensitivity that would otherwise produce overexposed pictures. This is done to achieve effects such as shallower depth of field or motion blur of a subject in a wider range of situations and atmospheric conditions. And now that we got the official explanation of an ND filter out of the way. Basically, it'll help you with stops of light, known as F-stops. And let's get into that right now. So with this Freewell Bright Day 4-pack, it comes with an ND8 PL, which stands for polarizer. It comes with an ND16, ND32, and an ND64. Now, the ND8 is a hybrid filter from Freewell that's helpful in cutting back light entering the camera by three stops. An ND16 will do the same thing by four stops. An ND32 will do it by five stops. And an ND64 will do it by six or more, depending. Now, probably one of the really nicest things about this free well. Now, considering the fact that it is PL, which means that it's polarizer, so it is not going to be waterproof. So that's something that you need to pay very close attention to. It's going to be a little bit splash proof. If you're out in the rain and a couple of water droplets hit it, you'll be fine. But I would not take it into the pool or into the ocean. Basically, do not submerge your camera with these ND filters because of the polarizing ring is not a waterproof seal. Now, it comes with optical glass, 16 layers of premium coated optical glass that is waterproof, scratch proof, dust proof, and even oil proof. Now, installing these is very simple. It's a very efficient screw on system that is easily attached and detached. And the construction of these ND filters are made of gimbal safe aircraft grade, super lightweight CNC aluminum frame construction. Now, right now I've got the Freewell ND filter, the ND64 that's on here right now. And as you can tell, it real and it's very bright and sunny right now. And I'll kind of show you what it looks like without an ND filter here in just a second. But just to show you what you can get, and with the polarizing filter on it, you can really change how you see through the glare of the water that I'm just rotating it around right now but just to give you an idea and I've got it set at ISO 100 and a shutter speed at 1 60th which is double the frame rate of 4k 30 frames per second but just to give you a little rough idea now this is bright is this is really super bright and sunny out here this ND filter is a little bit dark so we're gonna step down to an ND 32 and see how that looks all right, once again, 4K, 30 frames per second. This time using the ND32 filter from Freewell. ISO still set at 100, shutter speed at 160th, so it's double what the frame rate is. Let's see if I can get to a point where I can get a little bit of glare off the water.
And I'm gonna rotate this polarizer just to give you a rough idea. And we'll look up at the sky while I rotate it. You can see we can really darken out the sky or pop back that nice vivid blue color. Now you may ask yourself, well why in the world would I want to go into manual mode and adjust ISO and a shutter speed on an action camera? Most people just want to grab it and go and they just leave it to auto settings. Well, it's because a lot of people that want to shoot more cinematic stuff, they want to be able to control the shutter speed to give you that natural motion blur of things moving alongside the screen. And that's the rule of thumb. It's called the 180 degree rule. I'm going to rotate this just a hair. You can see how much it really darkens out the sky. But it'll help you get rid of some of the glare off of windows if you're shooting at a house per se. Let's see if I can catch this window here. So just rotating the polarizer around. The sky's nice and dark. Lighten it up just a hair. Right there looks really nice on the back of the screen. Don't know what it's going to look like in a computer, but that's why you want to use an ND, ND filter so that you can control how many stops of light are actually coming into the camera. And because if you were to normally set this to ISO 100 and the shutter speed at 160th, what happens is your image will be completely overblown. You won't see anything. What you'll see is just a completely white screen that's because the image is completely overexposed and you need to be able to stop down how much light is coming into the camera to achieve that nice motion blur but without affecting the exposure value and plus whenever you're doing this in manual whenever you're going from a bright area back down to a normal area that's not so bright the camera does not have to automatically try to adjust for the exposure. Because what you'll notice on a lot of action cameras, if you leave it on auto, when you go up towards the sky, it tries to adjust. You come back down, it tries to adjust. So you'll see that flickering action actually happen while the camera is trying to adjust the ISO. And... It won't be at 100, that's guaranteed. It may be at 3200, it may be at 6400, but it's trying its best to try to keep the exposure regular. But this way with the ND filter, you don't have to mess with any of that. You get to do it all manually yourself. And that way it keeps the camera and it keeps the video from changing exposure values from one lighting condition to the next. But then again, it's the ND filter that you're using for the lighting exposure that you have that you need to be able to pick out. And that's one nice thing about the Freewell ND filter, this uh, bright day pack, is that in the instruction manual, it even gives you different scenarios. All right, so without an ND filter, this is what happens. You're indoor, the camera's adjusting for the exposure value that it needs. And you came out here. And you see how it just went really bright. And then you come outside and now it's starting to get darker the more into the light that I'm getting. And as I back up, back into the shade, the camera sensor notices that I'm now into a darker area. So it tries to brighten up the image and that's why the sky has just gotten lighter. Because the camera is automatically trying to adjust white balance and the exposure for this camera and by the way I've got the uh, color profile set to normal it's not on decent alike so this is what an auto setting looks like like I said you go up to bright sky 
come down to something dark you notice it mainly when you're going from light to dark and I'll try to keep the sky in the background here so as we get into a shaded area you see the color of the sky and as I walk out into the Sun the sky is starting to get darker because it's starting to compensate and it's starting to adjust the ISO accordingly now modern action cameras they do a great job at trying to adjust the ISO correctly given the lighting condition but what happens is you still get that little stuttering effect and that's why when it comes to let's say a drone shot and the lighting condition starts to change and I'll even give you an example of that but as I start adjusting the drones camera angle you'll see it start to flicker and it's starting to adjust the ISO to try to keep it correct but that's where an ND filter comes in handy. So what are my final thoughts about the Freewell ND filter pack, the bright filter pack for the Osmo Action? I like it. I like its rugged construction of the case, which is, you know, it really doesn't have anything to do with the ND filters themselves, but it just shows a little bit of extra step that went into how to present and how to protect these ND filters. And I think it's a great thing you know, Freewell, I've been looking at their ND filters for a while. Normally, I've been dealing with Polar Pro with a lot of filters. So this is my first time ever using the Freewell ND filters. And I think they're very nicely constructed. I like the fact that they're screw-on because some of the other competitors out there have the magnetic type of stick-on. <laughs> Not that I'm afraid of anything magnetic, but... I do remember reading an article once where somebody had said on iPhone 7 to stick a magnet on the back of the, uh, or on the screen of the iPhone 7 and it will stop the stabilization. And it actually ruined my camera because mag magnetism and electronics usually don't go very well together. So I love the Osmo Action. It still has some quirks. The, free, the screen lag is one of them for me. Uh, but all in all, nice little camera my thoughts on the freewell bright day nd filter pack i really like it nd8 nd16 nd32 and an nd64 which can really come in handy if you're doing long exposure shots i'll put a product link in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself and if you think this video is informative share it around because it helps this channel grow and if you give it a like it also helps this channel grow and i do appreciate it and by the way if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing today click on that little subscribe button click on the bell so that you're notified every time i upload a video and until the next review i'll talk to you guys later bye